Hey, it is Saturday today, um, second week into um, working on this poetry film. Yes, we're still in lockdown in Tamaki Makoto, but hopefully ugh, we might get into level three next week. So that will be good. Well, at least we'll be able to get some takeaways. <laughs> Won't actually make much difference. And so I want to carry on discussing the process of making this poetry film that I started last week. <sighs> yeah, I've, it's, it's actually been a lot harder than I thought. I've gone through quite um, uh, up and down with it, thinking about it. When I first picked the poem, I was just going through my old journals of when I was in my early 20s and kind of wanting to pick something that was lighthearted and kind of fun to play with. But actually, the more I read it through the week, I was just so disconnected to the person who wrote that. Obviously, you know, she was me, a younger version of me, but I am no longer her. I, I don't see the world that way. So over this week, I've been finding it really disjointed to try and carry on, uh, but made a decision just to, to dig in into these um, ideas of the poem and more rather than try and start again. I love the first verse. I would like to mix red and blue, but I come out with purple when what I really want is red and blue mixed. I think it's so cute. And the word that I came up with, the abstract word I came up with last week, is curiosity, because I, I think it's, it's such a curious way um, to, you know, to think about mixing colours. And that's obviously a metaphor for, you know, um, other things in life. Um, but again, as I was reading through the the verses, the different verses and words, I was really over the week finding quite a disconnect, like I said. So I started kind of to think back about the girl that I was. I guess conceptually started to think about that she and all of my past, all the things I've done in the past, are the foundation of who I am now. And, and I made this kind of leap thinking, oh, foundation, skeletons. <laughs> so anyway, um, I was just thinking about skeletons and how, how to use skeletal imagery in the poem, which has got no reference to skeletal imagery at all, or skeletons or anything like that. However, for me, it's the turning point I needed to carry on with the poem. It, it sounds unusual, I guess, but, you know, for me, connecting with that girl who wrote the poem, myself as that, you know, 23-year-old girl who wrote this light-hearted poem about curiosity and life, and now living so much um, and having so much life experience, looking back, it sort of resonates as she is the foundation of who I am, and the skeleton is that foundation. What the issue is, I guess, with thinking about skeletons is that it's got kind of loaded meaning of death. Going forward and knowing that, I still want to play with the idea of the skeletal framework or, or that it is the frame of who we are, the skeleton of us, is our physical foundation. The conceptually about death that you know, you can't have life without death. And this poem is very youthful and it's very, it's got a lot of life in it. So I think that even though it seems at odds with each other, I feel like life and death are, you know, so intertwined and can obviously not be separated. Um, they are the same thing. Um, so I do want to play with that. And I feel a lot more engaged now with the work as the person I am now. And one really cool thing, a sort of serendipity part of this is that if you've watched some of the other YouTube videos that I've made, you'll see that I'm often walking on a beach because we live out west. So in Tamaki Makoto, there's a lot of west coast beaches that you can go to and there's a particular beach that you know I go to a lot. When I'm walking on the beach and I see 
like a dead fish or a skeletal remains of a crab or something like that I'm always taking images of it moving image because I'm kind of fascinated with with that type of thing and just the visual visual elements of it and I think that they're quite beautiful yeah so I've got a lot of footage already with this sort of skeletal f framework of what was a body yeah it's just this kind of curiousness that has led me down this path which is curious is one of my words that I'm using on the poem that's from last week we I went through you know these abstract words to help start with visualizing a poem so yeah one of the words is curious which I've yeah I'm just so fascinated with and some other serendipity sort of moments happen through the week too and it all feels like it's right to kind of move forward and you know this is a lockdown exercise but it's it's not something that I want to make just because I, I want you know I really do want to get involved and connect with the words and connect with the visual ideas of this so yeah I'm, I'm trying to you know, step out of the comfort zone a little bit, but it just feels like I'm on the right path now that I, I took that step back, couldn't couldn't connect, and then just sort of dug in to like, what is this? And then took a whole nother leap. So that's where I'm at. I will hopefully complete a couple of verses by next week and show you a draft of that, so that'll be fun. Um, yeah. Ciao.